Hello everyone. Today we're going to be working on learning the principles of 3D design for 3D printing threads and inserts. And basically the reason for this video is because while you can download most nuts and bolts off the internet and put them into your project as a step file, etc., uh, there are a lot of projects that you come across that you need something custom. And this is where we come in and I will teach you how to make sure that most of your projects are successful using these principles. I will go into detail so that you can learn how to do this yourself and you won't have to depend on downloading from somewhere else. Okay, so let's get right into it. And before we get into drawing any threads, we obviously need an object to put them on. So if you don't know what you're doing, go ahead and follow along with every single step of this video. And don't forget to play pause as necessary. But if you do know what you're doing, go ahead and skip to the part where I draw the threads and I talk about the reasons for how to do it. So what we do is basically we have the two circles, we go ahead and extrude those and we combine them as one object. But let's go ahead and make that a little bit longer because that's too short for what we need. Um, then basically what we need to do is project this onto the center plane so that we have the sketch to work with. But uh, keep in mind that when you do project round cylindrical objects, it does not give you the sides. So let's go ahead into the split view and you can see we don't have those lines on the side. So we're going to go ahead and add those so that we have something to work with that'll be more convenient than working in an empty space. That way we have them, some guidelines. All right, now that we've made sure that it's good, we go ahead and continue on to the next step. And this is arguably the most important step because you really have to know what you're doing and how your printer behaves. So for perfect accuracy, I like to sketch on the grid off my part because sometimes if you're just a little tiny bit off, it ruins the, the rest of the project and you have to go back and do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise do. But the rule of thumb for 3D prints is 45 degrees, right, for the angles. So that's the thread we're going to be working on today. And the offset or the tolerance, whatever you want to call it, that's the gap between the thread and the cutout for the thread to slide in, right? And considering that 3D printers are not 100% you know, perfect for tolerance because a lot depends on the materials, on the way you're printing, we do have different tolerances. So if you know your printer can handle it, the best tolerance I've come across with is 0 0.2 millimeters. If you're not really sure about that, go up to 0.3. And a bigger gap will obviously not be as good. But if your printer does print like a thicker line, that's that's what it will do. So let's go ahead and make the outer offset as well, because we do need a closed sketch to make that revolve of our insert. And uh, once we have something that we like, it doesn't matter what size, as long as we have a closed sketch, we go ahead and continue on. And I do want to fix that bottom piece because I don't like the way that it is. So let's go ahead and fix that. And whenever you're sketching, you can use the previous two lines to align it. It'll give you like a purple guideline that you can use to go ahead and reference that as you sketch. And then we just uh, take away the lines we don't need. And after that, we're pretty much ready to start revolving our threads. So that's going to go around the inside or the, the bolt of our project. And so we basically select the tool, revolve, and we select what we want to revolve. And we choose the middle line and we go ahead and revolve it. And we can either use the arrow or we can insert a number for whatever we want to put it up there. And then the, for the revolutions, we could put, I start with just 3600 just to see what it's like. And then since we don't have specifications for this project, we're just going to go ahead and eyeball it to see what looks good for what we need. And uh, I think that'll just about do it for this. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, okay? We need to go ahead and lower it so we align it with the top there. And then we need to extrude the top so that we have our little uh, insert piece, which I'll show you right now. We're going to chamfer it, and this is what's going to make it easier to insert our bolt into the nut or into the insert. And what we need to do is chain for this little edge right here so that we can replace the face to make it match, uh, you know, the, the chain for on the bolt. Because otherwise, if you just keep going down, it, 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 it'll it cut off like the thread at a sharp angle. And we don't want that. We want it to be smooth. We want it to look good. And this is a way to accomplish that. So once we have that, we go ahead and make a smoother edge, just a little finishing touch. And we can do the same thing to the thread to make it, you know, roll in smoother as we use it. So this is 
not absolutely necessary, but just a little, a little finishing touch that I like to add to my projects. That way it does work properly and it prints properly. After all of that is done, we're going to go ahead and connect everything using the union tool and then just add a couple finishing touches. Uh, let's fillet this edge right here, 0.4 millimeters, and then let's go ahead and chain for this by one millimeter and fillet it as a finishing smoothing effect. And after we do those things, we are basically done with the bolt and we can move on to the outer thread or the cutaway for the insert. Let's finish up that sketch because we don't need the lines to you know, cross each other, otherwise it won't let us revolve. So let's go ahead and choose that finished sketch, revolve it around the center, and then make sure that we repeat the same dimensions as we did for the sketch, so that way they match up. Once that is taken care of, we can move on to making our insert shape. We just use the same uh, circles as we did in the beginning, and don't forget to click new body so that it does not subtract from what we actually need to be there. Then let's go ahead and align it. And I do like to see what I'm working with. So let's go ahead and make it also transparent uh, because it's just so much easier to work with when you can see inside of the object. And it doesn't matter specifically what percentage you use for the opacity, but like as long as it's good for your eyes. Then we go ahead and align the thread and we make a duplicate because we want it to go all the way through the insert. That way it you know, it doesn't stop on something unless we actually want to stop her, but that's a, that's a separate topic. Sometimes you might want a place where it stops, but that's a different type of thread instead of what we're using here, which is like, you know, a soft transition. So let's go ahead and rotate that to match up with the old one. And we're going to go ahead and union those two together. So they become one piece. And at this point, I typically wouldn't bother making this transparent, but I'm going to just so I can show you exactly what's going on with it. So make it transparent and let's zoom in and you can see the gap between uh, the thread and the outer cutout thread. So that's called a tolerance typically used to identify like manufacturing styles so that things actually match up. But let's go ahead and subtract the thing from each other so that we have uh, the necessary pieces because once we take this away, we're going to have a little extra piece left over. So let's hide that and hide their insert and you'll you will see the piece that is actually the gap which we will need to remove by deleting it because it's no longer necessary but this is just so you can see this is the piece that was there the piece that we removed by subtracting you know the threaded part from the insert so let's go ahead and delete that we no longer need it and let's go ahead and union the two pieces together so that they become one piece. And then usually you can use different methods to cut away. I This is my favorite. I just like to cut away by using like a half circle. Just go ahead and make it bigger. You move it a little bit to the side so that you get the whole piece. And then you simply extrude it to slice through whatever object. Then we simply replace the face of that top lid to match the insert. And we have our piece aligned. So you can make whatever end cap you want for your project. But for this, this is what we need just so I can show you the principles. And let's go ahead and make it transparent again. So we see what we're working on and we can continue on by just finishing up a little thing here and there. And let's subtract this so we can remove that piece because I missed it earlier. And we do that as usual with the subtract tool. Just make sure that you choose what you're subtracting from the thing you're subtracting in the correct order. Otherwise, you will get results that you're not looking for. And uh, one thing I did fail to do in this video is make sure you leave a slight uh, like tolerance or gap between the bolt and the insert so that uh, when you do com connect those two that they slide in properly. All right, let's go ahead and just change the colors and see our final product uh, because basically this is done. Um, I know this seems like an anticlimactic finish to this project but this right here will help you design the threads and inserts that you need for your projects uh, if you just follow these principles you will have a lot of success a lot of cool things that you can do and i hope you did follow along and learn something <laughs> if you didn't i don't know what you're doing here but glad to see you anyways um, don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you have any questions go ahead and comment down below if you want more videos uh, to show different types of things you can do with this type of method, go ahead and let me know as well. And uh, again, 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stick around to see more things that come up as we go along. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.